Hi, I'm Scott Folk with Apex Tactical Specialties. Today we're here to install the Apex SD Spring Kit into the Smith & Wesson SD Pistol. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and go over the uh, parts kit that you'll get from us. You'll find four parts in this bag. You'll find the SD Slave Pin, the SD Trigger Return Spring, the Striker Block Spring, and a Striker Spring. These are the four parts that come in the kit, uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, begin the installation process now. I'll go ahead and field strip the gun by checking the guns unloaded, drop the slide, pull the trigger, grab the two takedown levers, pull them down just slightly while you pull the slide back, and then run the slide forward, pops right up the frame. I'll set the frame aside for now and we'll jump right into the slide. I'll remove the guide rod spring and assembly as well as the barrel. First thing we need to do is remove the striker block and the extractor. To do so, we're going to use a 1 16th inch roll pin punch. It has a little tip on the end to actually engage the, the hole in the pin itself. So what we'll do is we'll punch this pin straight down through the slide, pushing the pin out the bottom. And once that goes all the way through, I'm going to leave the pin in place to hold the extractor. I'll go ahead and lift this aside and make sure my extractor pin doesn't get lost. Holding the, I'll hold the extractor down to release tension, pull the pin out, and the extractor at that point will come out. Now when you release the extractor, you want to set that aside. As well as I also remove the extractor spring so I don't lose it in the process. Next thing we're going to do is remove the back plate from the slide. We do so by using another pin punch. There's a little white sleeve underneath the striker. I'm going to go in here, pull the striker back a little, push that sleeve forward toward the muzzle end, and at the same time, I'm going to use my thumb and push the back plate of the slide off. It should come off really easily. Once I've done that, I'll pull my pin out of the way. I will hold the striker block down in place, pull the striker out the back, and then as I release tension off the striker block itself, I can dump it out of the slide. To remove the spring from the striker block, we just give it a little twist and pull, it pulls right apart. We'll set that one aside and take the new apex spring. I'll take a little dab of grease and put it into the striker block. That'll act as an adhesive to hold the spring in place once I get ready to go. This will not lock into the striker block like the factory one, but it will work just the same. So we'll go ahead and reassemble now. I'll put the striker block back into the slide. Once I have it in place, I'll put the extractor spring back in, as well as the extractor. Holding the slide upside down, I'll take the extractor pin and run it back from the bottom up through the top. Once you, once you, when you take a hammer to punch it back in, once you get it flush with the slide rail itself, it'll hold the extractor in. Now you can use a, another pin punch to punch the pin all the way flush with the bottom of the slide. And there we have it. <clears throat> Next thing we'll, we'll replace is the striker spring. I'll take the slide itself, I'll take the, the striker, and I'll set the striker housing into the back of the slide backwards. And I'll make sure to set the striker itself, the striker extension, on the back of the slide. That allows me to pull down the striker spring, and hopefully not lose our spring cups here, take the tension off the spring cups, then remove them, take the striker spring off, and the factory one is painted green, the Apex one is not painted at all. Easy way to tell the difference. Put the Apex spring back on. Put one cup back on. Oops, not drop the other one. Now once I have this once I have the striker cups back on, I'll just push out and make sure the spring is working. Looks like we're in good shape. So I'll take the striker, put it back into the slide, run it all the way forward. You'll notice that the white sleeve will actually push in on spring tension. So what I'll do is I'll set the striker back plate into its channel and I'll put a little bit of upward pressure on it. It doesn't take much. And then I'll push on the white striker liner until the back plate comes up and captures it. Pull the pin out, lock the back plate on. 
At this point, the slide is complete. I'll wait to put the barrel and guide rod back in so I can show lubrication, proper lubrication of the barrel before we proceed. Uh, into the frame, first thing we'll do is remove the back pin out of the sear housing block and then the trigger pivot pin out of the uh, locking insert. I'll take my eighth inch roll pin punch and I'll punch the pin out. Set that pin aside. Once you get your pin punch pulled out of the frame, the easy way to remove this here housing block is to take the side of the pin and go between the, the slide rail and the frame itself. Push it into that gap and it'll pop the sear housing block free. At that point, the sear housing block can be pulled straight up out of the frame while you pull the trigger back. And you can, and you can actually disengage and set that aside. We're not going to do anything to the sear housing block because the spring is relatively difficult to reinstall and nothing needs to be done with those components. To remove the trigger pivot pin, we're going to use the apex slave pin. And we're going to push on the frame from the right side to the left keeping constant pressure on it. We'll move around the slide lock lever until it becomes free and as you can see the pin popped right out. The trigger pivot pin has two notches on it, one very close to the center and one off to the edge. Those two notches need to be off to the left side of the frame when you reinstall the pin. That's why we, we remove it from the right to the left. They lock into the trigger return spring and to the slide lock lever. So we'll set this pin aside from now, for now. We'll pull out the apex slave pin Once that's out, <clears throat> the, sear, the locking insert will pop right out, as well as the slide lock lever and the trigger bar. We'll set the frame aside. At this point, we, we will remove the trigger return spring from the trigger bar. You'll notice that the top of the trigger return spring, the opening on the spring, is actually in the up position as it's installed in the frame. This is critical so that the trigger bar does not become dislodged from the trigger return spring. So to remove this, we'll take the spring and roll it around the opposite side and just pop it off the trigger bar. We'll take the new apex spring, which is a finer wire diameter and does not have a piece of felt in the core. We'll take a little bit of grease and fill the spring with some white lithium grease. I'll take the small end of the loop on the trigger return spring and I'll hook it onto the trigger bar from the top lock it into the into the hole on the trigger bar and then roll it around into the trigger so when it goes back in the gun it goes back in, in the same fashion so we'll go ahead and reassemble this part now we'll take the frame and the trigger bar with the spring on it drop the trigger into the frame set the slide lock lever set the locking block into the frame at this point I'll take the apex slave pin and I'll run it in from the right to the left until it just gets into the trigger itself. Once that's there, kind of have to hold it in place sometimes. Once that's there, I'm going to bring the trigger return spring up to engage that pin and run this and run the slave pin all the way through the trigger bar. At this point, I should be able to feel the tension on the trigger bar and the return spring. <clears throat> from here, I'll back the pin out just a little bit. Enough to clear the side of the trigger for the slide lock lever to go in. Put the slide lock lever in. And then I'll run the slave pin all the way through the entire mechanism to make sure everything is functional. At this point, the slide lock lever should have spring tension holding it downward. I'll go ahead and take the trigger return, the trigger pivot pin, which has the two notches on it that I mentioned before, and I'll run the long end of the pin into the frame from the left to the right. At the same time, pushing out the slave pin. While I'm doing this, it may be necessary to pull the trigger bar, pull the trigger and let the trigger bar sit up as high as it can go. And at the same time, it may be necessary to wiggle the slide lock lever around to allow this, the pin to go through it. As you can see, as soon as it lined up, the pin went right through. I'll push on the pin and make sure it, it 
the seat's flush, it'll actually lock into place on the slide lock lever. At this point, again, you can check the slide lock lever functions properly, and when you hold the trigger bar down, the trigger will articulate properly and return on its own. Uh, we'll take the sear housing block, and before you reassemble it, if you want to do a little bit of polishing, you certainly can. The bottom of the sear engagement here and the back edge here can both be polished. I'll normally take 600 sandpaper wrapped uh, with a file wrapped around a file to polish those up. Um, I don't go any any heavier than that. I'm not trying to remove material. I'm just trying to smooth up what's already there. And as well as on the trigger bar itself, the back of the notch here and the top front edge here can also be polished. Nothing else is really necessary to be polished though. When I reassemble this, I'll put a little dab of grease on the inside at the, at the back edge of the trigger bar. I'll set, the trigger, I'll set the sear notch into the trigger bar and drop it all into the frame. It will slide back into its, into its little locking points. Once you, have it in, once you have it dropped into place, you can put a temporary pin through just to hold it. As you pull the trigger, you'll see the sear engaging. You can press down the disconnect tab, and as you release, you'll see the trigger bar go underneath and re-engage the sear. It looks like it's properly working. So we'll go ahead and put the roll pin back in the frame. You want to see just barely below flush, because it should sit almost proud on both sides. Okay, now we're going to go over a quick lubrication. You want to lubricate the underside, the outside, and the top of all four of the frame rails. That's necessary to keep the gun running smoothly. I'm also going to put a little bit of grease just under the edge of the locking insert. And for, that's basically to keep the gun, the, the gun cycling smoothly as the slide comes back and unlocks the barrel into the, into the locking insert. We'll set the frame aside for now. We'll go back to the barrel and the slide assembly. On the barrel itself, I want to put a little grease in the very front corner at the breech. I'm also going to put a little bit of grease on the bottom locking surfaces where there's burnishing. It doesn't require much. And then on the end of the barrel, right where the barrel smileys are as well. I'll just smear that around with my finger and that's normally sufficient lubrication. I'll put the barrel back into the slide, reassemble the guide rod. <clears throat> there, in the slide, there's a disconnector bump next to the striker. You want to have a little bit of grease on that. The amount that I just wiped on there from my grease syringe is normally more than enough. We'll go ahead and put the slide back on the frame. And with it locked in place, we should have somewhere right about a six pound trigger pull drop down from the nine from the factory. If you have any questions or other issues with installation, please feel free to call us or contact us on our website at www.apextactical.com.